Hello everybody and welcome back to part 2 of sculpting and 3D printing a sci-fi statue in ZBrush. I'm Rich Harrison and before I begin, if you haven't liked and subscribed, now's a good time to do so. And if you didn't catch part 1, I'll leave a link in the description below. So getting stuck right into it, it's time to add the hands and feet to the block out we made in part 1. I could continue on the same technique we used to create the block out to create both the hands and the feet. However, I have a quicker method. Bringing up the light box by clicking on the light box button or by pressing the comma key and navigating to the tool tab, we can see an array of different assets that ship with ZBrush. In this case we're going to use Julie and extract the hands and feet for use on our own sculpt. With the select rectangle brush in lasso mode, I'll hold Ctrl or Command and Shift to cover the selected area. Holding Alt at the same time turns the selection from green to red or from isolate to hide. This will hide the selected area. Then control shift dragging in the empty space on the canvas will invert the selection. I'll then delete the hidden body, leaving only the hands and feet. I'll then hit the split to parts button in the subtool menu to separate them into their own subtools. Separating off the hands and feet mean we can insert them into our block out. Given that we're working in symmetry, I'll simply insert the left hand and left foot move them into position, and mirror and weld them to the other side. As is the case with some other parts of the body, hands and feet don't vary too much from person to person, so it borders on pointless sculpting them from scratch every time, especially in a studio setting where deadlines might be tight. Now we're at a checkpoint in our sculpt, it's good to take a step back and look over it as a whole. I'll make some minor adjustments to the shins and backs of the thighs before moving on to the initial pose. As I highlighted in part 1, an advantage of using the IMM sphere method of creating the block out is it allows us to highlight and adjust specific regions of the body. This really comes into its own when posing the character, as I can highlight larger areas like the legs and rotate them at the joint and prevent any collapsing of the rotated section. This in turn saves time, as less time is needed to adjust the body after the pose has been made. At this point I have a rough pose in mind. I want her to be shooting two handguns and standing on something. But at this point that's all I know. And so there's an element of improvisation needed, as well as using reference to get the pose to a workable point. Given that the pose is a naturally somewhat symmetrical pose anyway, I'll be able to get her very close to the final position and stay in symmetry. For your sculpt, now is a good time to assess how long you're going to feasibly be able to sculpt in symmetry. If your character's pose is more extreme, you may want to stay in our symmetrical A pose until we've added details, otherwise you may create more work for yourself further down the line. I'm not yet sure what base I'm going to create for the statue. I'm going to let the character's aesthetic dictate that as more details about the narrative become clear. So blocking out a cylinder will do for now. Taking the character as a whole again, I'll now focus on silhouette and adjust what we already have to get the proportions to a finalized point before dynameshing. I want to make sure there's no empty space at the centre of the model so we're not left with any cavities once we dynamesh. I'll adjust larger regions with a larger move brush, adjusting the pose as I go. I've lowered the head and lifted the shoulders to give her a more focused, determined pose. I'm happy with where it's at at this point, so we're ready to dynamesh the body elements together. Now masking out everything but the head and the neck, I'll split all unmasked points to separate the head from the body. Opening up the geometry tab in the subtool palette, I'll set the resolution to a lower setting, 30 to 60, and hit Dynamesh. As you can see, this combines all of the IMM sphere pieces created in the block out and reconfigures the topology evenly over the model, keeping all the polygroups intact. Yet another useful feature of the IMM method is that now we have distinct creases marking out the main muscle groups and bony landmarks. These can be used to our advantage as much or as little as we deem fit as we begin to sculpt over the top. Keeping the head, hands and feet separate means we can adjust them independently as well as subdividing them to a higher resolution than if they were all one subtool. 
Starting with the head block out now, I'm going to begin by using primarily the damn standard brush to mark out areas where features will be placed. The move brush to push and pull insets like the eye sockets and outsets like the mouth, nose and chin and the clay brush with a square alpha to define larger areas. Here I'll mark the eye line with the damn standard to signify the central point in the head. I'll then use the standard brush with the alt key pressed to push in the eye sockets and slightly bring out the brow. I'll then mask out a muzzle area and use a combination of the gizmo and the move brush to pull out an area for the mouth, nose and chin. Next I'll mark out the jawline using the clay brush. I'll then quite freely move around the clay until the jawline and the chin begin to resemble what I'm looking for. Let me remind you at this stage that it's important to keep your reference close to hand, especially in the early stages when building your foundations, whether that be specific subject or facial anatomy and proportion guides. Don't be afraid at this stage to experiment and add in markers with whatever brush you feel comfortable with. I use these core brushes, not because they are in any way the best, but because I've experimented and find them to be the most efficient for my practice. After blocking out the nose with the clay brush, I'll create the cavity where the mouth will be by simply masking the area, inverting the mask and pulling the unmasked section back. I can then dynamesh to even out the topology and get rid of any stretched polygons. I know the character will be shouting, so I'll sculpt the mouth and adjust the jaw to suit this expression. Making sure to take a step back every so often to see how the head fits with the rest of the body. I'll use the same method as the mouth for the chin and utilise the unmasked area to define the shape. I'm still working at a very low Dynamesh resolution, so there's less pressure to keep the model pristine. I'm quite happy exploring shape and marking the surface wherever I want, as the model is quickly smoothed out or sculpted on top of, should something not work. By dragging out a couple of IMM spheres on the eye sockets, I'll create the eyes. I like to get the eyes in as early as possible, but this is a personal preference. For me, the character can't begin to be realised or recognisable as a subject until we have them in. I'll then use the clay brush to sculpt out some rough eyelids. Then I'll define the creases where the eyelids meet the brow with the damn standard. You'll see me moving over the head as a whole at this stage, making sure not to get too focused in on one specific area. I'll keep it at a distance, taking in how one feature will affect the flow of the structure, and making sure to rotate the model regularly and take it in from all angles. At this point, I'm really over-exaggerating the creases around the eyes, nose and mouth. This is because in a moment, I'm going to Z-remesh the head at a low subdivision level. Doing this will ensure that the Z-remesh calculation will place the edge loops where we want them. Ears are another area that I very rarely sculpt from scratch every time. Instead I'll use the IMM body parts brush to drag out ears and move them where I want them. We can then Dynamesh them to the head and blend them in. I'm being very rough at this stage, sketching out a general flow and exaggerating the peaks and valleys in the head's anatomical structure. I'll do this so that we have closer edge flow to what we want when it comes to Z-remeshing. We could remain in Dynamesh mode for the duration and continue to Dynamesh at higher resolution increments, but this isn't efficient and further down the line you'll either run into areas where you're lacking the resolution needed or the head's polygon count will be needlessly high. To create an improved neck shape than what I previously had, I simply pulled down an unmasked area and Dynamesh to even out the topology. Now I have all the markers blocked out on the rough head shape, it's time to Z-remesh. I'll make sure the ears and neck are Dynamesh to the head, leaving the eyes as a separate subtool. I'll set the Z-remesh resolution to 5000 polygons and hit Z-remesh. This will automatically retopologize our geometry to a target value of 5000 polygons. Based on the complexity of your model, this target value will not always be met, however 12000 is still suitable for a first subdivision level. You'll be surprised how much detail you can achieve with a low poly count, should you have the correct topology. 
For ZBrush to work efficiently, we need subdivision levels. This will also help us edit larger shapes without affecting the details, as we move up and down our subdivision levels as required. That said, this is all with 3D printing in mind. If you were to be taking this character to animation, you would need to retopologize the character manually. But seeing as this will be a static sculpture, what is best for the details is what is most important. Once I have the first subdivision level established, I can begin to work closer to my character references. I use the anatomy references to place the markers and get the correct setup. Now I want it to begin to look more like the concept or character I'm working towards. Pulling back, I can see that the head is getting to be on the larger side, and so with the gizmo enabled, I'll hit the select multiple subtools button signified by the dash with the tick inside. It'll become three dashes, and then using the control or command and shift keys, I'll region select the subtools I wish to manipulate, in this case the head and the eyes, and move and scale them accordingly. After this I'll press Ctrl or Command and D to subdivide the head once so I can begin to define some of the more fleshy areas while jumping back to subdivision level 1 to move around the larger forms. Notice I'm still only working at subdiv level 2 or 48,000 polys. This makes the model much easier to smooth and so I'm adding clay very strongly and then smoothing it down once applied. This is the technique I like to adopt when finding the character at this stage, adding and smoothing to slowly build up the form. Another benefit to good edge flow is that you can topology mask regions like the edge loops around the eyes so that you can better manipulate the brow or the loops around the nose to define the nasal avial fold. Do this by enabling the gizmo and control or command dragging anywhere on your model. Next I'll add the interior elements for the mouth and teeth and gums. This is an asset that I sculpted many years ago and have used on every human character since. I can't stress the importance of creating your own local asset library enough. Not only will it save you time, but it will propel your proficiency forward exponentially the more you add. This can be features of the body like the mouth, eyes, hands, feet, etc. Textures, alphas, HDRI maps, props, even down to full character base meshes. When your project inevitably grows in ambition and as a result complexity, it is unrealistic to count on sculpting everything from scratch every time. This can of course be done and sometimes has to be but it's important to assess every project based on the level of complexity it will demand from you. A sculpt could take weeks, even months to complete, and will require a large amount of concentration and commitment, and so any measures to prevent fatigue or loss of focus should be taken. This isn't to say that a reliance on external assets is paramount. It's important to learn how to sculpt these things so you know what the various forms look like, if you are starting out, sculpt anything and everything from scratch, but it can't hurt to export models out as OBJs for later use. Now at subdiv level 3, I'll go over my whole model and iron out any parts that don't feel right. I'll use build up brushes like the clay, standard and inflate to add mass to places like the cheeks, where there's a lot of flesh being pushed up by the expression. I'll pull out parts of the neck to better conform to the body. Notice how much character you can draw from the skull with just two subdivision levels. It might be tempting to up the subdivision levels early to brute force detail, but this is how your model will end up uneven in its detail, or often will become blobby and soft in appearance. If you notice this of your models, then consider taking it back a couple of subdivs and asking yourself if you've taken it as far as you can at that level. Due to our earlier Z remeshing, we're only at subdivision level 3, and not even 200,000 polys, and we are able to begin defining the creases in the lips and some of the larger wrinkles. The overall form of the head is where I want it to be at this point, and so I'm just moving over the model, still in symmetry, and tightening up some of the more stressed areas of the surface. 
It helps to keep a mirror close by or taking pictures of your own face to use as reference for creases and wrinkles. Moving on from the head now, I'd like to begin sculpting out some of the surface anatomy for the body. I'll be moving back onto the head closer towards the end in final detail in pass where we'll assess what detail is needed for the final print. Now still in Dynamesh mode, I'll begin to use my references closely to get the anatomy definition on the body sketched out. We won't be going into too much detail with this as I know she'll be wearing armour. But even with the costume covering her whole body, I believe it's still important to define your character's build. Building up your character from the inside out in this way will ensure that when it comes to designing and applying costume to the character, we know exactly how the costume elements will fit around the body. I'll use mostly the clay brush with a square alpha, applying and removing clay to the model to build up individual muscles then lightly defining the separation between the muscles with the damp standard. Be aware and take note of what Z intensity you're comfortable using with each brush. I like to use a low Z intensity with the clay brush when building up the form at this point, as we've already put a lot of effort into building the appropriate mass for our particular character's build. And as we are still in Dynamesh mode, I don't want to risk the body becoming warped or hard to manage by using an intensity that's too high. Depending on the muscular definition of your character, you might want to smooth out the transition between some of the creased areas and accentuate others. As well as the smooth brush, you'll see me using the trim dynamic brush to flatten down planes in some areas. This is great to achieve some detail when smoothing and leaves room for happy stylized accidents. Just like with the head, I'll make sure to keep my distance from the model and not get too close into the regions I'm working on. I'll move over the body as a whole, being sure to take it in from all angles. If you can't get a particular section to work or you're struggling to make it look right, then move on to another part and come back to it after having studied your references some more. Remember to work on the larger forms first, blocking them out over the entire model, then moving on to smaller details and regions after assessing the initial stage. The way a lot of sculptors break this process down is into three main categories. Primary forms are the largest shapes such as arms, legs, the head and the torso. Secondary forms are things like muscle groups and larger creases, and tertiary forms, which detail out the secondary forms. Things like pores, smaller wrinkles or scars. So I'll continue sketching out the surface anatomy with the dam standard, sculpting the form with the clay brush and smoothing with the shift or trim dynamic brush until I feel it's at a point I'm happy with, in that it should begin to feel like the character you're trying to capture. We won't know for sure until the costume has been blocked out and we'll be making edits to the character along the way. But if it feels good at this point, then odds are you're good to begin the next step. So with that, thank you for joining me for part two of sculpting and 3D printing a sci-fi character in ZBrush. Join me for part three, where we'll be blocking out our costume. <laughs>